Welcome back, Yarn Fanatics. You tune in to Bermuda Grass Central. And if you ever thought about overseeding your Bermuda lawn, well, BYD is about to show you how to start. You are watching Bermuda Grass Central, changing the world one yard at a time. Okay, Yarn Fanatics, look. More likely, I may have to go to Walmart because <clears throat> it's twenty nine ninety eight here, and the cashiers here are tripping, saying that they don't price match Lowe's. It's crazy. So I'm, it's twenty four ninety eight at Walmart. So I'll save the four bucks by going over there. But we're at Home Depot, so I'm going to show you this. Now, one thing you need to know if you're buying your Bermuda tree. You do look at the back of this bag and make sure that you're not buying. Okay, here's the uh, bag. testing date, February the 18th. Sales by 2018, November. If you stand in any of these other states in Florida, you should be sold by that. Okay, I'm in Georgia, so I'm good. All right. That's it. Okay, you are fanatics. The other thing you need to do is get you a starter fertilizer, all right? Remember, I talked about this once before. You gotta make sure you know what your square footage is, all right? And those are the analysis. 24, 25, 4. Now, bear in mind, if you get this starter fertilizer and you're gonna oversee, then you will not need to fertilize your yard with the fertilizer that you probably plan on using and remember i said this this is a excellent choice right here now the only downfall i'm a let's go guy and I, I was looking for the let's go fertilizer but they don't have it in here let's go starter i should i put a picture in the corner i suggest that because it's a little bit the slow release versus quick release all right at the same time of fertilizing get you some milwaukee night and add that also so you can get your micro and macro nutrients at the same time. Now here's a pro tip. Meloganite brings worms. So if you core aerate and you put this down, you're gonna get the benefits of core aeration and you're gonna get the benefits of worms aerating your soil also. So that's a key, key thing right there. That's how you really get that grass to jump start, all right? All right, yeah, we got uh, two core aerators here. It's the one with the four times, and that's great. If you're gonna do it yourself, plus you got to pay insurance on it if you want to get that. That's like an extra ten percent, so another what six, seven dollars. All right, now they got a pro model. This one has five times on it. See them? One, two, three, four, five. And I think it's $67 an hour plus tax and insurance. You know, I think this is the one that I'll be renting right here. All right, you gotta put a $150 deposit down on it with a credit card or a debit card. And, um, once you bring it back there. Now they're gonna literally take the 150 off your debit or credit, so you better have that money in your account. And um, let's we'll see what happens. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna rent this one. It's uh, 70 bucks, basically, for four hours. He said, plus the insurance also. Awesome. Okay, Yard Fanatics, look, I just rented it from Home Depot. I had to put $150 down on it. I got the insurance. Total, if I get it back in four hours, it'd be $78.86. Remember, you signed a contract with these people. Make sure you get the contract. This is the Pro Aerator. Uh, I need to have it back by 2.03 p.m. And uh, you can see, yep, BYD. That's the uh, one I rented it from right there. So we're about to get started. And um, 
Let's get to it. Let's just get to it. Okay, you are fanatics. Look, I just want you to know one thing. It is it's raining, and I'm still going. I'm, I'm, I'm still going to do it. Still going to do it. It's not raining hard, but if you rent an aerator, it's best to rent it. Um, make sure your soil is those tines right there. I went and got the one for five instead of four because the more holes you can put in the ground, the more you'll help your soil, your um, it's help with with um, compaction. The more nutrients you get to it, the deeper your roots will go. Um, it's just a better deal. Now this is a Ryan. All right, I seen a video on it. I think it was on YouTube. So I'm just giving you a little walk around so you can see what it looks like. And another thing too, if you're gonna do this, if you're gonna DIY, do it yourself, rent the aerator, get the holes in your ground, then go back and get your seeds. You don't have to get them all at the same time if you're in a herd. Because if you get those seeds, you may be tempted to go ahead and try to put them down <laughs> before you take the aerator back. Another thing you need to do, you need to know, is when you rent this thing, if you don't clean it up before you take it back, if they're gonna charge you a cleaning fee, you gotta make sure the um, gas is filled up when you take it back also. So, um, like I said, this is gonna, I'm trying to make this quick, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, film me aerating my lawn. If you had um, a True Green Kim on, one of those companies come by and tell you your yard needed aerating or dethatching. Okay, <clears throat> this is what they're seeing. You see that thatch layer right there? That's gonna break down, okay? Me personally, BYD, I recommend you have your yard aerated. When you dethatch your yard, it's a mess. You're gonna pull up a lot of dead roots, a lot of good roots. Um, it's worth it. If it's really bad thatch problem, but this is not bad. You, you, you consider it bad when you get to almost half an inch of thatch. That's way too much. You know, 0.25. That's kind of that's pushing it. But theoretically, this stuff will break down when the heat comes and you put your fertilizer down especially if you're putting down some milorganite some um, organic type feed fertilizer that you put down but yeah aerate your lawn before you air, um dethatch it now having said that look at the look at the size of the plugs that i'm getting i'm pulling almost two inch plugs out now this particular part of my yard this is the back part this is the part I told you that I had a little surprise for you guys. I'm gonna aerate it, which I'm doing now, and I'm gonna overseed it, that 5,000 square feet. That's the part that BYD planted. Yeah, it's kind of thin right now. We got a lot of Bermuda shoots coming up. It's gonna fill in, but I'm gonna overseed it with the exact same seed brand I bought last time. My front, no, I'm not overseeding that at all. 
because here's the deal when I, here's my theory. If you oversee a lawn that is really kind of in good shape, the variety seed that you put down is not going to be the same as that right there. So you're going to have two different type of fescues growing in there. This came from a side farm, farm and you're planting Bermuda seeds that came from Scott's, however they produce theirs. So it's, it's not going to be exact. It may be fine Bermuda, maybe a little thicker blade Bermuda. Got a competition problem that's going to start to happen. If it, does, if it doesn't take well, you have spots where it'll look like two totally different grasses. From a distance, that's going to be okay. But up close, you may be able to tell the difference. If you want to overseed your entire lawn, that's fine. Do you have to aerate to overseed? No. As long as you're getting seed to soil contact, it will take, not all of them, but your chances are greater when you aerate because what happens, some of these seedlings fall down in these holes. They take root down there. You still got sun and water, nutrients, all that stuff going in there while all this micro, micro activity is happening around it and it increases the chances. Like I said, do you have to put a starter fertilizer down? No. Will it help? Yes. If you've already fertilized your yard, it's not necessary to put a starter fertilizer down. Some guys will say it is. I've been doing this for a whole lot of years and I've overseeded yards without any fertilizer. As long as you got those poly-coated seeds that state that they are, are protected and they help promote growth, you should be fine. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to water like crazy when you put that those seeds down if you wanted them to take dope. You can't just put down seeds with no um, irrigation and expect for them to take. I'm aerating the heck out of this thing today and I'm gonna throw seeds down in my back today. So maybe a part two to this video, you may be watching a part two now. But um, that's, that's something you need to know. And another thing too, guys, when you rent your aerator, make sure the person who's um, renting it to you, show you, you know, basically how it works. This Ryan's pretty easy. On off switch right there, flip it on. I already had it choke started, so I don't have to redo that. But that's where the choke is. This thing has a speed throttle on it. The faster you have it, the faster the pull. My recommendation, do not go rabbit. Don't go full speed or you'll yank yourself into the ground. Keep it at medium. And basically, you just pull the string. That's it. That's it. So let me finish that right this thing. And um, we'll talk a little bit later. Like I said, we're pulling about two inch plugs. Uh, the top of that one fell off. Let's see if I can find a good one. Good example. 
All right, we'll use this one right here. <clears throat> All right, you see it? See that one right there? Like I said, you can see the change in the soil. Like I said, that's straight clay. I got a little good material right there. That little part kind of right down the middle would be kind of considered the thatch. That's the top of it right there. And another thing you can do, you can kind of break it off. You can kind of see how far your roots go down. That's real clay. Like I said, I did the whole entire yard. It took me a couple hours. Took it back. I'm not gonna walk all the way around. The area that's really compacted, I aerated it extra. And this area is aer aerated a little extra. <clears throat> you can see guys, lots of plugs, lots of plugs. And this is how it should look. You should be pulling plugs up. <clears throat> like I said, I'm sitting on Georgia clay. So that's what my plugs look like. But that darkness at the top right there, that's what you want to see. I don't want the whole thing to be red. But that darkness, that's good soil. Should you get those plugs up? No, leave them there. They'll break down. We just alleviated compaction in the yard. We open it up. The yard is getting a lot more air. It's getting a lot more um, nutrition. Another plug. All right, that's the area that I planted back here. We're finna oversee this. This is the area that's going to be overseed. 5,000 square feet. Looks like a whole bunch of little turds. In that area that I said where I got all that shade all around my border, aerated it I'm gonna oversee it but it's not probably not gonna take but I'm still gonna keep trying because you need at least eight hours of full Sun for that Bermuda to grow and spread all right the poana starting to die off you can see a lot of spots where it's real yellowy not gonna really make a big focus out of it but kind of right there Guys, this is part one. All right, part two is coming up. That's going to be the overseer. So I'm glad you watched this video. Like I said, coming around, that's what a water drain right there. Got rid of that extra hard. It's looking good, y'all. Looking good. Looking good. Okay, guys, remember. You're tuned into Bermuda Grass Central with BYD. I am Michael Bowman, and I'll talk to you soon.